I love cooking and baking, but I am by no means a professional, and I don't have all the fancy equipment most people have to make bread. Plus, I don't have a lot of time and energy to put a ton of effort into it. So here's what I do. I don't eat grains, especially if it's store-bought, but the truth is I love sourdough bread and I really do love a good avocado toast every so often. So if I'm going to eat bread, I want a product with the least amount of ingredients and additives, and I prefer sourdough since it's more beneficial than regular types of bread. This is not a loaf recipe, but maybe you could make a loaf from it. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. It is, however, a fantastic ciabatta recipe, and I don't think it's very challenging, especially once you've done it a couple of times. It does, however, like all bread, take some planning because it needs time to proof both at room temperature and in the refrigerator before you bake it. It probably takes about a day and a half before you can actually do the baking part of it. And you don't need any fancy, expensive bread making tools or what have you. I do use a stand mixer, which I find very helpful, but you don't even need that. Let me walk you through the recipe and my process. The very first thing you wanna do is feed your starter the evening before you plan to start your dough. This recipe calls for 100 grams of starter. So I typically take all my starter that's in the jar, and this will be about 80 or 90 grams, and I'll add 90 grams of water and 90 grams of flour. Make sure you have a large enough jar to accommodate the rise of this much starter because this, this is definitely not gonna be able to keep up with you know 200 grams of starter, so make sure you have a bigger jar. The reason I keep all of the starter is to ensure that the next morning I'm gonna have at least 200 grams of starter so I can pull out the 100 that I need for the recipe and still have at least 30 grams to keep my starter going for later. The morning after I feed my starter, I'm gonna start making the dough. The recipe calls for the following. 360 grams of water, I like room temperature or lukewarm water, 12 grams of salt, and 100 grams of sourdough starter. You'll also need 450 grams of bread flour or some sort of white flour, or three and a half cups of whole wheat or whole grain flour. In my video on making a starter, I mentioned you almost always want to weigh your ingredients. And this is good practice based on weather conditions. Any water vapor in the air can be absorbed by the flour, which leads to expansion of the flour. So if you're measuring by volume with a measuring cup, it can give you an incorrect amount of flour. However, for this recipe, I use a volume measurement, but only for the flour. This is because I use 100% whole grain flour or whole wheat flour, where the recipe calls for white flour. So why would I use a volume measurement instead of weight just because I'm using whole grain flour instead of white flour? Because whole wheat flour actually weighs less than white flour, but it also absorbs more of the water, so you end up needing less of it. If you were to use the same amount of weighed whole wheat flour as you would white flour, you'd end up with a dough that is denser and drier. So if you're using whole wheat or whole grain flour, use a volume measurement. If you're using white or bread flour, use the weight measurement in this recipe. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my water and I'm gonna mix my salt into it for about a minute or two. After that, I'm going to lightly stir in the sourdough. Then add the flour. You may find it easier to mix if you sift the flour, but I don't really do that much anymore. Just make sure the dough is smooth and not lumpy. If you're using a stand mixer, I use a dough hook and let it mix for about three to five minutes. You want to end up with a wet, sticky ball of dough. If it's too runny, you can slowly add in more flour until it's a bit more firm. But for this recipe, again, because I'm using whole wheat flour, I do kind of like it a little bit more loose. Then you're going to cover the bowl and let it sit for 30 minutes. After this, you're going to stretch and fold the dough four times, 30 minutes apart. Now, once you've folded and stretched your dough, 
and it's, you know, you've done that four times, you're going to transfer the dough into a straight-sided container. And what I mean by that is something that's flat and has straight sides, like this container. That way, you can easily see when it's risen to just less than double what you start with. Now go ahead and cover this container with a towel and let it proof on your counter or in your oven with just the light on for some warmth. The amount of time it's gonna to take to proof will depend on the temperature and humidity in your house. It can take a few hours. It could also take eight to 12 hours depending on the temperature. Once it's risen, place a lid on the container and put it in the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours. I seem to have the best results when I let it cold proof for closer to 24 hours than the 12 hour mark. Try it different ways and see what works best for you. Because again, it all depends on your specific location and temperature and humidity levels. And here's the fun part. And I mean that sarcastically. Now you need to shape it and let it stand for about an hour. You don't need to use a loaf pan or uh, a bread form or anything like that. You can form the dough by hand, but you're definitely gonna want some extra flour for this part, especially if the dough is still a bit wet and sticky and you wanna place it on the parchment paper. I, however, find it to be too messy and difficult to maintain in a nice shape. So I did end up purchasing some French bread and small roll forms only to make my job easier. The ones I use have holes in the bottom, so I still cover up a baking sheet with parchment paper before I put them on it. Again, you really don't need it. You can figure out for yourself if it's something you wanna buy or not. While the dough is resting, go ahead and heat your oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's ready, bake the bread for 10 minutes. After that, reduce the heat to 450 degrees and rotate the pan and bake for another 10 minutes. Remove it from the oven and let it cool for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Because I don't eat a bunch of bread and I don't eat it frequently, I simply slice it down and freeze it so that I can defrost a piece or two when I'm ready for it. But if you prefer to store it on your countertop, I like this bees wrap since it keeps it from drying out and it's reusable. And now you've got fresh sourdough ciabatta. It may not be the prettiest bread you'll make, but it is tasty. If you follow the recipe in this video, please let me know in the comments how it turned out for you or if you have any questions. Oh, and let me know if you decide to make a loaf instead of ciabatta. That way I can decide if I should attempt to do it myself. And again, thank you for joining me here on Tater Town. I'm gonna use this plate to put my bread on. My neighbors, Rebecca and Adam, and their kids got this for us. Looks like Carolina.